I am lying to you. But do you know how? Hello, everybody. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. In a previous video, I did a simple risk analysis to show that engineering has real financial value for yacht manufacturers. But during that analysis, I made a flurry of assumptions and simplifications. Now that's appropriate for the forum of YouTube, but I had to do it to the point where a critic might say that I was lying with numbers. So today, I tear apart my own analysis to show how numbers can be deceptive. We've all heard the phrase, there are lies, darned lies, and then there are statistics. No, they're not. Uh, they're actually using statistics wrong in that quote. When people think of statistics, the examples they think of are actually just numbers. Every time you're imagining the nightly news throwing something up on the TV screen to show you how something is up or another is down or, gee, look, there are this many things happening in the world, those are not statistics. They are just numbers. It's very easy to lie with numbers because we can present them out of context and sound very impressive. Statistics are different. Statistics is a formal way of presenting numbers that always includes two pieces of information. What is the number and how much can you trust that number? The second piece is very important to remember. How much can you trust the number? Statistics makes it very difficult to lie. That's why you see it this way in scientific papers. The format of presentation is very important. It means that we always include some context for the importance of the number. Look at the two examples on the screen. Imagine you heard that on the nightly news. Breaking news, five out of every 10 ships sink every week. Well, that sounds pretty scary on its own, but that is just a number. If we were to rephrase that and present it formally as a statistic, Breaking news, five out of every 10 ships sink this week, plus or minus four ships. Now you've got some information on how much you can trust that number, because you think, hold on, five minus four ships is one out of 10. That's not much. Five plus four is nine out of 10. That's almost all of them. Well, which is it? One out of 10 or nine out of 10? This, this kind of sounds like a hogus number. I'm not sure I can believe it. That is why you have to distinguish between statistics and numbers. Numbers lie, statistics can't. We can even see how we apply statistics in engineering when we're examining the real world, because the real world lies to us as well. Statistics help provide a litmus test of truth. Let's imagine that an engineer is designing a hull plate to withstand some pressure on the hull. Well, if you view it just as a number, then the only thing we have to know is how much pressure can that plate take? And what is the actual pressure right now? Actual pressure is less than the limit. Huzzah, we're safe. Not so fast. Now let's look at it as a statistic. The statistic tells us that we were only looking at the averages of the first two numbers. And if we in fact look at the distribution of both of those, we find out that, well, there's a pretty large overlap between the limit that my plate can handle. There's a lot of variability in my limit. And there's also a lot of variability in the pressure that's actually being applied. So let's look at the overlap of those two curves. Without going into all the math, I can tell you that anything in that red shaded region runs a chance of actual failure. Now you don't have to know statistics to look at that and say, that's a pretty large red region. That makes up a lot of both of those curves. I might be a little worried here. So now the engineer turns around and says, I'm going to change this a little bit. We apply a safety factor. We say that the limit pressure for the plate has to be so many times higher than the actual pressure to push these two curves farther apart and reduce their overlap. Now, what should that safety factor be? That's where risk analysis comes in, and you can actually relate the odds of something failing to a required safety factor. That's way beyond the scope of this video, though. Back to numbers and lying. 
Here is a great example out of my own analysis from last time, where I could do a better job to use statistics in engineering. I was talking about the value of human life, and I said the average value is around $10 million. I sound very confident. I sound convincing. It's inspiring, isn't it? That makes us all feel good. But my statement was only based on seven points of data. Whoops. Presenting this with statistics gives better context. The better statement was actually to say that the value of human life is $9.3 million plus or minus 3.4 million. Wait a minute. That means my value could be anywhere from 5.9 to 12.7 million. My margin for error was 72% of my number. I mean, how would you feel if your boss said, well, your paycheck is 500 plus or minus 72%. That is an abysmally low confidence. And this is the great part about statistics. We see the context. It gives us enough information to question the number. We now see in this case that this number was good enough for a silly YouTube video, but don't make any critical life choices based on this. This also goes back to the point that I made in my previous video where I was talking about for risk analysis, accurate data is hard to find and very valuable. And when we start looking at it with statistics, we see now the value. If I want to be able to trust that number, if I want to make an investment decision worth millions of dollars, I'm willing to pay a couple hundred dollars to make sure I can really trust that number. And that's the beautiful part about statistics combining with risk analysis we can see not only the value of our decisions from risk analysis, but we can also see how much we should trust those decisions and that analysis by looking at statistics. But sometimes statistics is not about the math. It's about the question that you asked. You might remember this graph from the previous video that I did, looking at boating accidents based on US Coast Guard data. I was trying to work out what are the odds of a boating accident so that I could apply that to the value of engineering. Well, now we have to look at that in more detail in my analysis. See, I just took all of the accidents that were attributed. Why? Because it made it very simple to do the analysis. But if we dive into more depth, we have to ask, hold on, we're looking at this from an engineering perspective. How many of those accidents were related to engineering? So now we need to start diving into that data in more depth. Thankfully, Coast Guard provides a little more information on that. We now have to ask, what are the odds that the boat contributes to the accident? And just taking a single page out of that Coast Guard report, we can see that there's a fair number of those accidents that are strictly related to operator error. And this is a beautiful example of refining your question to segment the data, to get the right information. Because we're recognizing there's definitely still a portion here to consider for engineering, but it's not the whole and it's not none. It's somewhere in between. And that in-between region is when you want to be very careful about looking at your data set and asking, am I looking at the right categories? Am I excluding the right sections of this data? Or am I confirming a bias? Am I somehow biasing my results by only looking at certain parts? I mean, in the case of this analysis, there might actually be an argument to include the accidents that were strictly responsible from operator error, because we might turn around and ask, could those accidents be reduced in their harm with some sort of safety feature built into the boat? That would be an argument for engineering. We see that this actually becomes a point of good refinement and debate, of asking the right question. And it's not always an easy answer. So here's another lesson we learn is that no statistic is 100% perfect. We say that they can't lie, but they only tell you about the question that you asked, and we're not always sure we're asking the right question. And so to get better statistics, better data, you have to get more specific in your question. So for example, when we're looking at accidents attributed to engineering, that could actually be refined into a more detailed question of three categories or what are the probabilities of accidents that result from faulty design or a system that failed from lack of maintenance. And then we should also look at cases of operator error where the vessel design could have done something to reduce the consequences of that accident. A great example here is seat belts on cars. 
Seat belts don't make humans safer drivers, but they do go a long way to save humans in the cases of bad driving. And you can see there how a better study of the data has given me a more specific question, which will ultimately lead to a better summary from that question. This page, this slide especially hurts the statisticians. It drives them bonkers because of one key word that I used, independent events. In this slide, I extrapolated the probability of something happening in one year to have that happening over a 50 year lifespan. Now you might think that, okay, just take one year times 50. It doesn't actually work quite that way. And the reason is that I used the word independent. That's a key word in statistics and probability because the odds of something failing in one year may or may not relate to the odds of the previous years. If you think of, say, a car, well, as that car gets older, the maintenance requirements go up, the equipment starts to get worn down, the engine develops problems, the odds of failure go up as it gets older. There's a relationship from year to year. The statistics needs to account for that. Me, I ignored that because it does turn into some pretty nasty math. Sometimes we not, may not even know if there's a dependency between two things. We may not know that Jeff and Bob are causing the accident related to Mary. I mean, imagine right now you're wondering who are Jeff and Bob and what do they have to do with Mary? I don't know, but we could turn to statistics to answer the question. There's actually a tool in statistics called an ANOVA that allows you to look at the relationship between data sets and actually determine, is there a correlation? Is there a dependency related between Jeff and Bob or not. And that's another beautiful tool of statistics. If I was doing this as a proper statistical analysis, I would include a reference to an ANOVA analysis to justify my assumptions. Because it's YouTube and I'm doing this for free, I'm not going to bother. So those were just a few holes in my own analysis. And the moral of the story is, don't believe everything you see on TV. Not even me. But there are some useful lessons for how to be a critical viewer, how to look at things with a critical eye. Number one, don't confuse numbers with statistics. Numbers lie, statistics can't. And it's a very formal way of presenting it. That's why we do statistics in that way, to always give you the context. But even if you have statistics, the statistics are only as good as the data. Remember that a statistic is a generalized summary of some large specific data set. So you have to start with the right data set to begin with. Good data is a hard and expensive thing to get. You usually have to pay for it. But even if we've done steps one and two, we're not lying, we're using statistics, we've paid, we have good data. Step three comes in is that the math that we're using depends on the question that we're asking. We're trying to summarize our data set. And the first thing we're going to do is sort it to make sure we're only looking at the data that applies to our question. So you have to make sure you're asking the right question because everybody comes in with biases that might actually affect the summaries and the results and the statistics. Remember, the math is only as good as the person running it. And when in doubt, questions that are more specific that's the better way to go. So I hope this has given you a bit of a critical eye of how you shouldn't believe every number you see, and also a way that you can use statistics as a method of knowing that there's context applied to those numbers and giving you hints about how much you should trust the analysis that you see on TV. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. What is ship design to you? Because my job as a professional engineer is to take your understanding of ship design, that general goal, and turn it into technical specifications to make it a reality. So check out the website and let's see how I can take your dreams and make them possible. Thanks very much.